So once again, Gaitan, good morning. We now proceed to a continuation of the eight brief tales of lovers. So the next pair that we will have is the pair of Baucis and Philemon. Baucis is the woman while Philemon is the man. Both of these are actually old people. They're old. Uh, it, we have the story of an old man and an old woman. This story involves the names of Jupiter and Mercury, the gods who decided to descend from, from Olympus. They descended and appeared as poor wayfarers or poor travelers. In, the, in that attempt to, since, since Jupiter decided to go down, uh, since Jupiter felt like there's nothing else to do in Olympus, he decided to go down to the human world, as in the, in the words of Hamilton, to look for adventures. I think you know what these adventures might mean. Uh, Angel also had an adventure with the Chuti. So, he, uh, Jupiter asked Mercury to accompany him because Mercury seems to be the best company there. Like, he's the most entertaining, he's wise. So, Mercury was requested by Jupiter to accompany him on that journey, on that adventure. When they reached the human world, they tried to look for a place to stay in or for some, someone out there, for a family or house out there to accept them. Unfortunately, no one accepted them. But there was one household, though, which they did not expect to accept them as poor way wayfarers. We have the household of Baucis and Philemon. It's a poor household. Simply put, the household is quite poor. Like the poor among the poor. We, we can put, put them that way. Yet they were not hesitant to accept visitors. Much so, they were very excited. Very excited and really accommodating. You could, uh, if only we could just see the scene for ourselves. The, fa the expressions in the faces of Philemon, Baucis and Philemon, were the kind that really welcomes visitors and guests. Something that Jupiter and Mercury did not, exact, uh, uh, did not expect because they were rather expecting for, for poor people to, to shoo them away. But we have a pair here, a pair of poor, of a pair of a, a pair of a poor man and a poor woman who gladly accepted them. Um, to the point that Baucis and Philemon offered them food, offered them a place, a table to have their meals. They were even willing to, yeah, they were even willing to chase. Uh, what, what there was an animal that they wanted to chase. Like to chase some, some of their. I'm I'm looking for it. But there, I think ch some chicken. The roost. What was it? Goose. 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 They were willing to chase some goose. Or uh, some geese in their in their household, just so they'll have something to provide to Jupiter and Mercury. That's how accommodating the both of them are. And, the, and Jupiter and Mercury noticed this. And they were willing to reciprocate that goodness of behavior that Baucis and Philemon showed to them. It reached a point that while they were serving some form of drink to Jupiter and Mercury, Baucis and Philemon noticed that the drink does not seem to run out. For those many libations that they poured into the cup of Mercury and Jupiter, they were expecting, of course, that the drink would, be, would run out from its container. But to their surprise, the drink seemed always full up to the brim. This gave Baucis and Philemon the idea that the guests that they accommodated were no ordinary visitors. And that's where eventually Zeus, I know, Jupiter and Mercury introduced themselves. They gave them the opportunity to know who they really are, but this did not rather distress ba Baucis and Philemon. It's different from the other mortals. The, but the case is different. When Zeus would be known, or when Jupiter would be known as Jupiter, 
the mortals would rather fear it. But since the case now is different because it's a matter of welcoming guests, Baucis and Philemon were even, were even granted a, a, a chance by, by, by Jupiter because Jupiter offered them that whatever it is that they ask for will be granted. Since Baucis and Philemon were already quite old, they only wished for one thing, and that they be together forever. And aside from that, they were requesting that they be made priests of the temples of, of the temple of Zeus. So to cut the story short, the house of Baucis and Philemon, that hut, that poor house of Baucis and Philemon, turned into a temple. As part of the request, um, Baucis and Philemon again wanted to be priests, and they were they became the priests of the temple of Jupiter. Years passed. Of course, they are mortals. They are bound to die. In their death, they noticed that each one of them was putting forth leaves. So both Baucis and Philemon became trees. One was the oak, the other was the linden. Perhaps it's uh, to symbolize the masculinity and sturdity. Um, we could associate the oak to Philemon while, the, while Baucis became the linden. But the, but the magical thing behind it is the oak and the tree grew from the same trunk. So we have two kinds of trees growing from one trunk. And this is to really commit, this is perhaps Zeus and, yeah, Zeus's way of committing to the request that Baucis and Philemon made, that the both of them stay forever together. So again, they, they, though they may be two different trees, they still shared, they just shared the same trunk. They came from the same trunk. So that's the story of Baucis and Philemon. We now go to the story of Indy Mayan. This story of Indy Mayan is one which I find to be, I don't know how you see it, but I find this to be quite unfair on the end of, of Indy Mayan. This is by, um, I, uh, yeah. thank you Lorraine for, for typing in the name of the tree. That's Linden. So Indy Mayan is actually described as a handsome young man, a youth of surpassing beauty. They refer to him as a king, some refer to him as a hunter, some refer to him as a shepherd. So he has the looks, he has the physical build for it, and then there was this being who fell in love with Indimayon. And we have that being as the moon in the name of Selene. And what did Selene do? Selene sounds here kind of selfish. It sounds kind of selfish because what she did instead was to put Indimayo to sleep, an eternal slumber. That's quite sad. And Indimayo wasn't anymore able to wake up. He remained asleep. Uh, it's there or she allowed him to sleep so that she might always find him and caress him as she pleased. Just look at that. It is said too that her passion brings her only a burden of pain fraught with many sighs. That's true. Because while she pleases herself with the sight of her love, <laughs> sexual harassment, unfortunately, Indy Mayon could not physically reciprocate it or we could even say there was no emotional reciprocation coming from Indimayon because the only one who, who enjoyed that moment was the moon it's only Celine who managed I, we, nothing though here has been said about Indimayon feeling totally in love towards Celine if we settle with what Hamilton had provided in her book, it's really a one-sided one version of love. Where Celine, was, Celine saw Indy Mayon, she fell in love with him, she put him to sleep. 
an eternal slumber. And yes, that's probably the reason why Hamilton also added that instead of bringing more joys and happiness to her, it brought her instead more burdens of pain. Because the one that she fell in love with wasn't awake, wasn't there to enjoy the feeling of love together with her. Sad. We now go to the story of Daphne. Daphne is a young huntress. As a huntress, you could of course associate her right away to one goddess, and that is Diana. Daphne is one who worships Diana as her choice of a goddess. As a huntress, she's into the wild. She's into hunting in forests. While she is doing all of these things, one of the gods out there noticed her and fell in love with her. In fact, she was then labeled as this god's first love. Who is this god? We have the name of Apollo. You may not necessarily use the term Phoebus Apollo because this is of a Roman connotation because we have the name of Diana. We don't have here the name of Artemis. We are using instead the name of Diana. So what happened here is this is an amazing chase. This goes on for an amazing chase. As she is a huntress, you should expect she is of good physical stamina. What happened is um, Apollo saw her, her dress short to the knee, her arms bare, her hair in wild disarray. But from the eyes of Apollo, we have a perfect woman. So Apollo thought, what would she not look like properly dressed and with her hair nicely arranged? Daphne fled as the, har as the chase went on. She fled, but Apollo was so persistent that, she, that he was willing to go after her. In fact, Apollo introduced, introduced himself. He told Daphne not to be afraid of him. He presented himself as the Lord of Delphi and that he loved him. However, Daphne is one who does not want to be involved in marriage nor on love. So he decided, nah, I don't want you. I'd rather, be, I'd rather prefer to be by myself. But since the persistence of Apollo was so overwhelming, then again, the chase went on. Human as she is, she could not push through with this, with this chase forever. Maybe she's by. <laughs> she could not push through with this chase forever. So what did she do? The, um, Daphne asked for the help of her father, Phineus, the river god, to, uh, yeah, she asked for her father's help. So what did her father do? Her father turned her into a tree. The tree which was, which was later on loved and favored by Apollo. And this tree is the laurel. That's probably one good reason why Apollo has developed some fondness towards the laurel. Because that's the tree where his first love has, had been turned into. <laughs> Phineas and Ferb. Phineas and Ferb? What's perb? Then we have the last pair of Alpheus and Arethusa. This is another unrequited love. I, I, can't, I can't blame mortals if they would choose not to be in a relationship with a god. Or for a woman not to be, uh, for a man not to be in a relationship with a goddess. I can't really blame them. Alpheus and Arethusa. Alpheus is our god here, while Arethusa is a huntress, who at this time is worshipping Artemis. So the story of Arethusa and Alpheus is of Greek origin. This is quite weird now because the story proceeded with Arethusa bathing on a body of water on a river. And while she was in that river, she felt as though something was watching her. Of course, we have Alpheus as the river god. 
I mean, you can just imagine, as a river god, probably he turned himself into a river at the time while Arethusa was on that same river naked, taking a bath. So just, it's like she's bathing, she's, she's taking a bath in Alpheus. That's why she felt as though someone was watching her. Yes, that's a support. I was expecting that reaction, Lorraine. And that's probably what's going. We can safely assume that that's what happened there, Angel. Because I mean, if you are a river god, you can. Can you just, if you can recall, the the Percy Jackson series, Poseidon there became the water itself. Remember that part at, at, at the start of the movie, the lightning thief. Poseidon was so big, and then he turned into a body of water. And then he 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 became small. He turned into the size of a human on that on that deck. Probably probably gods and goddesses really can do it. That if this is your attribution, then you can change into that particular characteristic. So if we have a river god, it's safe to assume that Alpheus changed himself into a river, and that's it, and it's that same river where Arethusa had a bath or took a swim. And then again, that's probably a good reason why Arethusa felt that someone was watching her. And so what she did was to get off from it, and then she ran. She she left the river. She ran away with all her speed, but she is just a mere mortal. No matter how good her stamina is, her being immortal has proved to be so much of a limit to her stamina. Compared to Alpheus. So what did Arethusa do? She called on Artemis' assistance. She asked for the help of Artemis. And Artemis turned her into a spring. A body of water. She became a spring. But Alpheus wasn't done yet. Alpheus was not yet done. Alpheus actually um, turned himself back into a body of water, into a river. To make that connection between the spring and the river. Allow me to read the words of, of Hamilton. It is said that even so, she was not free of Alpheus. The god changing back into a river followed her through the tunnel. And now, his water mingles with hers. In, a part In fact, they say that often Greek flowers are seen coming up from the bottom. And that if a wooden cup is thrown in Alpheus in Greece, the water would, the, that the cup would reappear is thrown in, in Greece, in the Alpheus River in Greece, that same cup would come out in the Sicilian spring named Arethusa. Named after Arethusa. Or from that well of Arethusa. So Alpheus wasn't, wasn't satisfied. He into a body of water to be able to get connected with Arethusa. The her, that's his form of persistence. And yes, there are just gods and goddesses. Mostly on the gods. So that concludes the eight brief tales of lovers. We now go to your FTs. Please get your FTs, everyone. The FTs are very easy. We begin with FT1. So FT1 is a matter of matching type. So we look for, we have a name of one pair, of one person, and then we'll have to identify the pair of that person. We begin the game show. I, I'm glad that, by the way, there was one point, this exam was given, this kind of activity was given to students before. So what they did was to not place a letter before the number. They had to draw in lines. And I think you know the danger of drawing lines on a matching type of test. 
they can just make a lot of curves. And sir, here's still my answer, sir. Oh, that instead of doing just like just this line, what they'll do instead is this. So they still reach the line. Oh, so, oh. and then what if others will also try to put it at the center and then distribute it later on? So to do away that was to do away with that danger, we do the putting of a letter before the number, starting with the name in number one. I'd like to request again Ishi to read that name. Hi. Um. I don't know Ishi, but when it came to that name, all other frames came became empty. All names. From the other frames disappeared. Your name is the your frame was the only one left with the name. <laughs> Wait, I'll try to remember. Say it. Yes. Okay. Correct. <laughs> you have say it. The pair and, of um, is... I'll keep uh, letter G. <laughs> you have the name of Alcioni. Correct. Number two. Wait. I, can, I don't know, but at first I thought there's something wrong with the prof pick of nice. At first I thought that there's just something wrong with that prof pick. I, at first, nice, actually, I wanted to tell you to look for a different prof pick. But later on, I realized, ah, okay, it's fine. It's, 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 it's something that will work. <laughs> Let's do number two. We have the name of Orpheus. The pair is... Eurydice, letter H. This bis pair is Pyramus, letter C. Galatea is paired with Pygmalion, letter B. Arethusa's pair is Alpheus, letter E. Baucis, the old woman, is paired with the old man, Philemon, letter F. Celine. I had put someone to eternal slumber. The name of the man is Indimayon. And lastly, you have Daphne, who is considered to be the first love of Apollo, letter D. Let's now go to FT2. Take note for FT2, your answer should be in pairs. The answer is not just the name of one person, but the name, names of both persons should be there as each number is asking for a pair. We begin with number one. Uh, I'd like to request someone to read it for us. Number one, I'd like um, Bunta, John Christian Buntag to answer it. Yay, Buntag. <laughs> I'll read John. Sir. Yes, please, go. The love between these two came out as something between a creator and a creation. I'll answer, sir. Of course. <laughs> Pygmalion and uh, Galatea. Galatea and Pygmalion. Or if you, if you interchange the names as Galatea and Pygmalion, that's fine. Pygmalion and Galatea, Galatea and Pygmalion. Correct. We go to number two. I see. The man in this pair went to the underworld to take back the soul of his beloved, Orpheus and Eurydice. Now, the names of Orpheus and Eurydice, correct. Number three, please read an answer, a lie. Um, this pair became birds later on. Later on. Alcione and Seix. Seix and Alcione, correct. Number four, please read an answer, Kenneth. Yes, Miguel, Miguel. Kenneth Miguel. Uh, sir? Number four. Um, the woman in this bear became the tree de dearly favored by the man who had fallen in love with her. Yes, Miguel, what's the answer? Um, I skipped this number, sir. <laughs> I didn't but, know, that, sir. but that has just been discussed now. It just came out today. I mean, the discussion was really there. 
So wait, wait. Let, let me read the question with the word that Angel is suggesting. This woman, the woman in despair became the tree dearly devoured by the man. The tree was the one devoured. Yes, Miguel. The names Miguel have just been mentioned today. There's one pair where the woman became a tree and the man did not. The woman became a tree, it saddened the man. Though the man is not just really a man, it's the, it, the man is a god. Oh, go, I'm giving you the clues now, Miguel. Miguel. Oh, Miguel. You're choppy, sir. Wait, sir. It's choppy. What, what, sir? What did you say? Um, Again, you have you, we are referring here to a couple where the woman became a tree, and the man is not just actually a man but a god. So, who is this pair, Miguel? Japanese, sir. Pair, pair. We are asking for the pair. So it's Daphne and. Apollo. Apollo, correct. See, you have the pair of Daphne and Apollo. I, I I'll try to request everybody to do the deep voice filter. If you have the deep voice filter at home, please do the deep voice filter. It's something that, it's actually free for download. You can just download deep it anytime soon. Filter. Yeah, the deep voice filter. Let's go to number five. I'd like to request Leja. Leja, can you please answer number five? And please try your best to use the deep voice filter. Yes, Leja, go. <laughs> the story had an ending. It was more or less similar to the story of Romeo and Juliet. Pyramus and Tisby. You have the story of Pyramus and Tisby. Leja, have you not yet downloaded the deep voice filter? So you have there the pair of Pyramus and Tisbe. Or if you wanted it to be up to be written as Tisbe and Pyramus, that's fine. Let's go to the next number. I'd like to call Lorraine. Lorraine has earned 20 pesos last time. Oh, this pair has her who gave his name to the goddess's favorite city. Pygmalion and Galatea. Uh, yes, it's it's correct. That's uh, the pair of Pygmalion and Galatea. Winner! <laughs> so, give the next number to Dane. Dane, can you please answer the next number? With a deep voice filter, Dane, please. Thank you. I don't know how, sir. <laughs> anyway, it's free for download. Please find time to download it later on. Go, go Dane. Correct. You have the pair of Bosses and Philemon. Next number, we give it to um, Chelsea. <clears throat> what number again, sir? <laughs> we are now on number number eight. A number eight. Deep voice filter, deep voice filter. The woman in despair become a certain body. <laughs> Stop laughing, sir! I'm not, I'm not laughing. Where am I? Certain body of water. Arethosa. <laughs> so what's the what's the pair? We need the names of two people, two beings there. You have? It's just a woman, Mansur. Yeah, but the item is asking for a pair, so you should give out the two names. Uh-uh. Arithoso and Alpheus. What? Arithoso? Arithosa. Oh, you have the name of Arithosa? Ari <laughs> Arithosa? Who's Arithosa? Basta It's, it's Arithosa. Arithosa and Alpheus. Or Alpheus and Arithosa. Correct. We go to the next oh, number, which is number nine. We'll now give the floor to Viona. Yes, Viona. 
deep voice filter first. Deep voice filter. Be sure that you have already um, attached that filter to your Zoom apps, ha? That should be in your Zoom apps. Sir, wala siyang mic. Oh, there's no mic. Who said that? <laughs> Wait, who said that? Who said sir. this, sir? Wala... Sir. That's Rain. Oh my God, Rain. Oh, so Fiona doesn't have a mic now. That, that spares her from the deep voice filter. So Rain, I'll just give the floor to you. This pair was once... <laughs> deep voice filter coming in. Deep voice filter. The pair was once separated by a wall with a tiny hole at the center, which then served as the only portal of their communication. Pyramus and Tisbe. You have the this bay. <laughs> you have the names of Pyramus and this bay. Correct, correct, correct. We now go to the next item. That of number ten. We call in John. Um, for a while, Juliana. What is the number four? Four. Oh, numbers four to ten. Uh, anyway, we can go back to them later on. Or right. if someone from you could type in the answers, please do so. John, we give number 10. The woman in despair has always given great honor to Artemis, Arethusa and Alpheus. Yes, yeah, Arethusa and Alpheus. The voice of John is naturally deep. It has the filter. Number 11, I'd give the... Wait. Number 11, I'd give the floor to... Um, Alex. Deep voice filter, Alex. Deep voice filter. I don't know, sir. I don't have that. You don't? The woman. <laughs> the woman in this pair was, God, was a god's first love, Daphne and Apollo. They're the pair of Daphne and Apollo, or Apollo and Daphne. Next, number 11. Nice. Number 12, sorry, number 12. Nice, your turn. I don't have an answer, sir. It's all right, it's all right. The, the answer the act, actually, oh, okay. yeah, the answer actually to that has also, has also just been given today in a discussion. Okay. The story of this pair involved two gods who appeared as poor wayfarers. So you have the names of? But uh, the names of the pairs have of the pair have just been given today. I know I didn't hear. Oh, I'd like to request Ninia to give the answers. Ninia, hello, Ninia. Hello, Ninia. Yes, sir. <laughs> So, what are the answers? For number... Philemon. There, the, the names are Philemon and... What's the other one? Hello, Nini? Bausis. Correct. You have the names of ba Bausis and Philemon. Correct. Number four. Number 13. I'd like Kiana to answer the question in number 13. Uh, <laughs> hello, hello, Kiana. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, okay. Because you're trying to sound so deep, the volume does not get to be that loud. Is that it? No. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm trying to download the the filter. Filter, filter. Okay, okay. <laughs> Go. The man in despair was Pygmalion and Galatea. You have the pair of Pygmalion and Galatea, correct? It's yeah. so with so much bass. There's so much bass in that in that voice, though. Like, yeah. Yeah. We go to number fourteen. We'd like to request Marco to answer it. 
Hello, Marco. Marco, Polo, Marco, Polo. I, I'm not sure if Marco could. What about Juliana? Please answer number 14. Am I choppy, sir? You're, you're not, but the filter isn't there yet. <coughs> the deep filter or some shit? The deep filter voice. Okay. Mm. I kept it. The man in this <laughs> The man in this pair was the son of the light bearer. Snalcioni. Again, again, what's the first, what's the first name? Sex and Alcioni. The Sex and Alcioni, <laughs> correct. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Last number. Uh, we'll give the last number to the person who just placed in the voice filter. Kenneth Miguel. Miguel, where are you? Where's Where's Miguel? Sorry. Is he here? There. Please go. Back. Please answer number fifteen. Go. The woman in the apartment did not manage to leave the daughter in the, with her love because she did not follow the condition given to her. <laughs> Miguel just sounds high. <laughs> so what's the answer, Miguel? Um, <laughs> yes, what's the answer? This B, sir. Is it this B, by Ramos? Is there no one who would like to say that that question is wrong? There's something wrong with that question, actually. Yeah. I just, I just realized it this morning while I was preparing for it. It's not Yuri Dice who failed to follow the instructions. It was Orpheus. So we can leave that one as a, as a bonus item. But for the purpose of discussions, the, the supposed answer there would be Orpheus and Yuri Dice. It's just that the structure made the question wrong. It's not Yuridice who failed to follow instructions. It was rather Orpheus who did not follow instructions because of his fear that Yuridice wasn't actually following him. The instructions were clear and simple. Do not look back while you are making your way out of the underworld. Of some uncertainties and doubts that, she, that he felt, he decided to look back. And when he did, the walls of the underworld closed. Yuri Dice wasn't able to go with him. It is. I tried to help. You all don't listen. <laughs> so let's go to FT3. Characterize Pyramus and Thisbe. Give a support to each description. One description per character. So number one get, gets a total of four points. So when we characterize a character, we provide a description and we provide an explanation as to why the character is described in such manner. So we have Pyramus and Thisbe. Don't worry, though this is recorded, the good thing with the characterizations is if you could provide a good explanation. Wait, where's your deep pause? Sorry. <clears throat> if you could provide a good explanation, then more or less your description becomes acceptable and correct. But take note, we are after of a good explanation. One that makes sense. So we start with Pyramus. Neil, how would you describe Pyramus? Hello, hello, Neil. Hello. Hello, Neil. This is customer care service. Hello, Neil. I think there's something wrong with Neil's. I, I think as well for Thea. Uh, oh, there. There you are. Hello, Neil. Did, did you get the question earlier, Neil? 
I, I just, I'll just call someone else. Honey Claire. Honey Claire, your turn. Describe Pyramus and then explain why you have given that description. Honey Claire is not also responding at all. Oh. I'd like to request. No, Neil, I can't. Neil, 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 I cannot hear you anymore, Neil. What about Alai? Alai, I'll give number one to you. Alai. Alai. Uh, Alai, you're on mute. That's why we cannot hear you. It's all right, Alai. You don't have to show your face. Just answer it. Just turn your your audio on. It's all right. Those are natural. Those are onomatopoeic sounds. They're all right. Just don't show anything to us. If what we'll hear is it, then that's natural. Go alive. Oh, Ally is not ready. What about Icy? How would you describe Pyramus? Do I need a filter? I will no, sound so, Indian. May, 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 <laughs> I, may, may, may I hear it for myself? I will sound Indian. It's all right, it's all right. Everybody has gone through Fine. that phase. <clears throat> Paramus really loved this baby curse. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I told you. Oh, that's what it meant. Yeah, the Indian that's boy. what I meant. Okay, go on, go on, go on. It's all right. Never it's all right. mind, Adam's Rui. Just, just use that style. Just use that. Anyway, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Paramus really loved this bee and it shows that he is a very loving person and caring. <laughs> so see, we, we tried to really hold it in. It's like, it's like Icy was trying to whisper something in your ears like, I'm going to kill you. By the time you wake up, you will already find yourself in another world, but not, you will not anymore be part of the scene. <laughs> You'll be dead. So that description provided by I I see silly correct. Pyramus is such a loving person because yes, it came out in the story. He really loved Tisby so much. What about um Tisby? How would you describe Tisby, Angel? Tisby is the deep voice. Yeah, filtered, filtered. I cannot do that. You said earlier that it would make it appear as though you're shouting. Can we hear, hear you do it? Yeah, it's, I don't know what I'm saying. Ah, if I say it's a, it's a. It's just... <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never go, go, go. <laughs> I, I, I okay. think I can do a high filter. Never mind, I'll just say, I think this be is courageous and persevering. Despite being shaken by the presence of the lioness, she still sucked it up and went again to their meeting place so as not to disappoint Pyramus. But she's still dumb, she told herself. <laughs> so there were two descriptions that Angel provided. One that's good and one that's not really good. In terms of how she's so blatant in describing this be as dumb. You really have a point there. While she may be described as persevering as well. You've placed your case there. It's, I, I couldn't agree more on the last part. Yeah, I can't really blame you if you also found her to be quite dumb. People really turn out to be dumb when they're, they're, when they're feeling it. No? They'll, they'll eventually lose it. Let's go to the second question. By the way, I hope you, look at, you have also looked at your answers. Question number two. How did Venus help Pygmalion in his desire? <laughs> I'll not read it because it's recorded. <laughs> I'll not read that, Juliana. <laughs> How did 
<laughs> How did Venus help Pygmalion in his desire? I'd like to call Rain. <clears throat> Venus gave life to the sculpture that Pygmalion made. Correct. Let's give that two points. The, yeah, the answer in number two will be given. Answers are given two points. Correct, Venus. Notice that there's this so much attachment between Pygmalion and that sculpture that he made. So she gave life to that sculpture, turned it into a human being. A complete one. Number three, prove that Arethusa, according to the story, has not been made free from the love of Alpheus. How can you prove that Arethusa was not set free from the love of Alpheus? Lasia. <clears throat> Arethusa has not been made free from the love of Alpheus because it was stated that at the end Alpheus is Turn back into a river and his water just makes it. <laughs> Leja is having such a hard time. Puberty issues there. The voice. So what that's what happened. Alpheus turned himself into a body of water to be connected still to the spring, to the, that spring where Arit where Aritusa has just been turned into. And then the eternal connection of splashes is there. Why did Alcyone turn into a bird? Uh, Neil? Anything Neil? Neil just said, ah. Uh, did it work? Hello, hello, hello? Hello? We can, we can hear you now, Neil. Wow. Well, earlier, we can't. Lorraine, question, the question is, why did... Alcyone turn into a bird. Yeah, yes, Lorraine. No one else here is named Lorraine. It's only you. They still use the, the filter, sir. Your call. It's better if you can. Don't okay. break each other's neck. Uh, uh, Alcyone, yeah. Alcyone was turned into a bird by the god so that she will be reunited with her husband. Correct. Yeah. With the goal of wanting yeah. herself to be reunited with her husband, the gods and goddesses turned them into birds, turned her into a bird so that she could fly from that end of the shore to where the body of Seix was, uh, was, was set afloat. So eventually, Seix was also turned into a bird. So you have there, the for numbers two, three, and four, each number will actually be given two points, with four points coming from number one. That is why FT3 totals to 10 points. Questions regarding the eight brief tales of lovers. So the ST will be given on this one on Saturday, Saturday morning. This afternoon, we proceed with the manuscript speeches. Hopefully, we can still accommodate nine people so that the remaining nine students will have their turn on Monday of next week. There was this question sent, uh, asked by quite a number. Sir, will we do the checking of the modules for public speaking this afternoon? No. The module on the orations and declamations will be tackled on some other time when all manuscript speeches have already been delivered. So, sir, so if we're done deliver, delivering our speech, sir, is it fine now? We won't enter for this afternoon's session. You'll be marked absent. Oh, okay, sir. However, the case is different on Monday of next week. Like, there okay. are still nine, probably eight or nine students who will have to meet me on Monday of next week for the purpose of delivering their manuscript speeches. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. But, but this afternoon, make yourselves available for it. Okay, we have reached uh, 10.40. Good, 
three or four minutes to spare before 10.45. So if there are no more other concerns, if there are no more questions, we can call it a day. Goodbye, grade 10. Goodbye. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank I did not end the recording no, because no, I, wa I wanted to really capture how it would sound when everybody oh. says something in a very deep voice. When you say it all together, how synchro synchronized uh, deep voice filter use would sound like. Oh. It sounded so raw. Why is it? Oh, why? Why? The the torment, the horrors. <laughs> it's all there. It's all there. <laughs> <laughs> Depression. This is Inferno, the Divine Comedy. I, I was looking for the right circle where that sound effect fits. It's like when someone enters the portals of, he portals of hell, Bana. Yeah. God, that was scary. I, I was expecting that right, right after saying goodbye, you'd end this right away. <laughs> I did not expect to get those voices.